In our approach, we are aiming to investigate the influencing factors in task performance in a pick and play scenario. We are investigating visual, auditory, and somatosensory stimulation. More specifically, we are comparing a display monitor or a virtual reality device. In an auditory stimulation, we are either investigating the presence or absence of it, and a somatosensory, also known as haptic feedback, we are again investigating the presence or absence of it. We are also investigating the effectiveness of these modalities in task performance in manipulation tasks of barren complexity. We are integrating different 3D primitives, such as a cube, cylinder, and a sphere. By also randomizing their sizes and randomizing the distances, we are able to assess the effectiveness of each interface condition across manipulation tasks of varying complexity. On the left, we can see the simulation environment with all the different kinds of software plugins used. These are detailed in the paper. On the right, we have the hardware overview. By using the dot product of the two bone vectors, we will be able to extract the joint angles for each individual joint. Thus, we took that from the loop motion hand controller and transferred that to the shadow dexter's hand shown on the upper right. Furthermore, to smooth out the mapping from the leap to the shadow hand, we also implemented a simple PD controller with a velocity reference. To achieve haptic feedback, we constructed our own custom haptic glove by using different kinds of vibration motors that are used in everyday smartphone devices, we were able to construct vibrotactile stimulation. By using the open source microcontroller Arduino, we were also able to control the intensity of these devices. In this short clip, we are showing our hand retargeting approach in real time. Friction forces and high fidelity physics have been implemented in our simulation environment. We disregarded the use of a snap and untouch approach to be able to generalize these to realistic objects. Placing an object, irrespective of the accuracy of it, to the placement volume produces a sound. When touching the table, also a warning sound goes off. By throwing the objects, we can also control the sound feedback. For each subtask, a user is given 30 seconds to complete it. Once the countdown reaches 3 seconds, an alarm goes off, indicating that the task is about to end. In the remainder of the video, we show real-time recordings of the participants operating in the virtual environment. We hope you enjoy the following clips from the participants to give you a rough idea of our study. Please find also attached our results from our study at the end of the video. We summarize the effectiveness of all conditions across all manipulation tasks with increasing complexity by equally weighting and averaging all the subjective and objective measurements into one final percentage value. More specifically, in the figures that you see, the data points from the scatter plot have been line fitted through linear regression to visualize a cone like illustration. The width of the cone represents the effectiveness, while the height of the cone represents the manipulation tasks of varying complexity from the best to worst performing interface condition, C6, C8, C5, C7, C4, C2, C3, C1. Thank you for your attention and time.